Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at our Terrace IP with Kurt Schuler. He's going to talk today about a new concept in automotive engineering called SOTIF. So Kurt, SOTIF, uh, which stands for Safety of the Intended Functionality, what is that and how new is this? Well, first off, it's, it's very new and it was an outgrowth of our work on the ISO 26262 Functional Safety Standard. So as we were going through and looking at what was happening now uh, with cars as they're getting more and more automation, more and more electronics, we realized that uh, not only can bad things be caused by faults, failures, and errors, as that's what ISO 26262 is all about, but things can happen in the environment of the vehicle that then cause um, an unintended safety problem. And so SOTIF was designed to address that. So really, this is a function of com complexity in the system, right? Because as you have all these interacting pieces, as you have uh, changes on the road conditions from one car to the next, you don't necessarily know how the things are going to behave. This is brand new technology. Exactly. And the big issue is that, you know, I've got this chart here, and you actually see this in the SOTIP spec. And here is, you know, unsafe state, safe state, um, known and unknown. And what you're trying to do is limit the number of unknown unsafe states that the system could be in. And the system's pretty complex. Remember, a system has three different parts. There's a sensor, there's control, which is digital logic, which is a lot of what we're involved in, and then there's actuation. And these things, even though they don't have a fault or a failure in them, can still cause the car or any other vehicle to do unintended things based on what it sees in the environment. What happens with the AI logic in an autonomous vehicle where they're taught to learn things and they actually behave differently from one car to the next over time? Well, the hope is that given the same inputs, that AI logic is going to have uh, very similar outputs. It's probability based, it should be extremely close. But the hard thing is, is the uh, different things that occur in the environment are the tons of degrees of freedom, orders of magnitude complexity more than what you can generally validate on a test track or through street drives, things like that. And so the SOTIF is created to try to provide, ultimately, that there's really two aspects of it. One is provide validation guidance for these complex systems. And for a semiconductor vendor, or like us, a semiconductor IP vendor, there's probably not too much in there that we have to change how we do things. However, another aspect is to improve upon and to decrease as much as possible these unknown, unsafe uh, situations. Uh, we need diagnostics on these vehicles, and when there's a problem, we need forensics. And that's where we start getting involved more deeply. And so, for example, if you're driving along in the road and your car gets hit by a rock out of a truck that's driving in front of you, that's going to cause a different problem for your car than it might for somebody else's. And so you need to be able to understand what went wrong there, right? Yeah, you would need to be able to understand what went wrong. And if it's an autonomous vehicle, the car is going to take some kind of response because of that. And of course, there may be a sensor that is affected and that's taken offline. And so the car is gonna to have to respond to that and do something about it. This is assuming you have no steering wheel. So this is, these are things that can, you, know, you can plan for. These are kind of the, the known unsafe conditions. But what about an unknown unsafe condition where perhaps just the way that the light is diffusing through the air and through the clouds, it happens to blind all the sensors on the front of the car. Uh, nobody saw that coming, but it could happen. How often is that going to happen? And if it is going to happen a lot, what are you going to do when it goes into the known unsafe thing? What are you going to do to address it? And these are system-wide problems that need to be addressed. Do these get addressed inside the circuits and inside the chips, or do they get addressed externally? Uh, the chips and the circuits are part of the overall problem. So don't look at it as an external internal thing. Uh, look at it as a complete system. So again, sensors, control, actuators, and you can address these issues anywhere within each of those blocks and anywhere within either the chips or the software or the mechanicals uh, within those systems. And so that's where some engineering creativity comes in. This becomes a lot harder as you start getting different models of a car, uh, different features in a car, doesn't it? As opposed to, you've got the old Henry Ford, you can have any color as long as it's black. Yes, this, get, this gets really difficult, especially if you think about uh, when you 
update the car. Let's say it's got um, an autonomous driving system, a lot of it's uh, neural network based, so it's, it's been trained. And then all of a sudden, from the data center, your car manufacturer says, hey, you know, we've got an up, a software update, and we're basically going to, it's a personality update for your car, and it's going to uh, act differently. How do you make sure that that personality update for the car, and in fact, the whole car with it, has been validated correctly prior to sending that out to tens of thousands or even millions of different automobiles? Most people are not used to thinking of their cars as evolving systems. They think of them typically as degrading systems over time. What you're talking about here, though, is keeping this thing almost up to, uh, it now has to stay at peak operating performance throughout its entire lifetime. Yes, and these systems are always learning. And when it, when it comes to safety, I mean, it would almost be um, a bad moral thing not to update the system when you find out, hey, there's something safe there, or there's something that can cause a safety problem, and we're not going to update you know, the software um, within that system to address it. So the, the OEMs you know, know that they're going to have to do that, and that as the systems learn more and they get more miles, there's going to be more and more updates to it. But how to handle that in a safe manner is a very difficult thing that the industry is going to struggle with for years. What does SODIF do both the, de the design cycle as well as the cost of designing these systems? So I don't think, unlike ISO 26262, which um, and we've talked about before, uh, for semiconductor teams, you know, it requires um, uh, more traceability between, you know, what we've talked about, you know, requirements going into what actually what the engineering tasks are. Engineering through verification, engineering tasks through verification are really good within semiconductor, but we don't always change the specs when we change the product. We don't always go back and change the requirements to match. So, you know, we've had to deal with that um, from a development process uh, aspect in, in semiconductor for ISO 26262. We're not going to have to um, change as much as, as we did to adopt ISO 26262 in our world. However, um, what it is going to mean is that these systems you know, are going to be updated over time. The OEMs and other people in the value chain are going to have to have a way to validate that when these systems are updated that they are going to be more safe than the system that they are updating. And that is something that uh, semiconductor and software people are going to be heavily involved in. What's the basis for that decision? Is it strictly numbers of what's happened in the past, things that have gone wrong, or is it actually understanding the full operation of the system? Well, it's, it's the understanding that some of the most dangerous things are, um, you know, the system is nominal, it's working perfectly, but because that system experienced something that wasn't considered in the requirements for it, that, hey, there's a problem. And when we're dealing with anything that's autonomous, it's easy in a factory because it's a very, you know what's going on, you know what the temperature is in that factory all the time. You know what the electrical supply is. You know where people are and where they're not because you see the yellow lines around the, around the different robots. It's a very defined thing. So those, those robots can be as autonomous as you like with, without hurting people. Cars are totally different. Um, you know, my daughter could be kicking her soccer ball, kick it into the street and go chase after it in front of the car. You know, it's a very uh, different environment for those cars that they have to do. And they are going to have to be continually improved, uh, but we are going to have to wait, have a way to validate that entire system. Does this make sign off harder or easier as you get through the design cycle? Um, that is a tough one to answer because it is a system level problem that we're dealing with here when we're talking uh, SODIF. Uh, one of the different things is, is that companies are going to have to have a way uh, to do validation in such a way that they exercise everything in that system uh, properly, including, including uh, semiconductors. Uh, and we haven't figured out how we can do that uh, within these complex systems yet. Do we need new tools or is this exactly the same as what we have only used differently? Um, I think in this case uh, it's going to be the same level of tooling. I th I think what is going to change, though, is that um, if you look at these chips, one of the big things I think is going to be diagnostics, whether it's just in the normal course of events, having an understanding of how the system is reacting to the world around it and being able to take that information, 
send that back to the data center. Perhaps you see some new stuff that you can use for learning uh, to create those new software updates later. Um, also, an example where the car crashes and you need to do forensics and understand what was the system thinking uh, before that happened, what was its view of reality before it did whatever it did, uh, that's going to be important. So that's going to require, um, it's not just a software issue, it's probably going to require some, uh, some work within hardware to make sure, especially in forensics, when you have a crash, that you can get access to that data. Is this something where you're going to say this design is sort of compliant, or is it a best practices uh, type of approach where it will be applied to all designs? I think it'll be a best practices uh, approach that'll be voluntarily applied uh, to systems that go into the automobiles. And what that means is, you know, whether it's a, a GM or a Magna or one of those guys, you know, they're going to have some, some more questions, some more information that they're going to require from their semiconductor suppliers. Um, and they may have some more information that they require uh, from their semiconductor IP uh, vendors uh, to do that. Will security be part of this as well? Uh, security right now is still its own uh, separate set of specifications, their SAE specifications. Um, so right now, uh, it doesn't look like security is going to be a big part of this, uh, similar to what it is for ISO 26262, but that could change in the future as we take a more, more holistic view of these systems. Kurt Schuer, thanks for a great explanation. Thank you.